Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's only been a few hours, but um, this is the first segment uh, for uh, Wednesday, December 4th. It is 23 hours and 30 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, December 4th, 2013. So that's our timestamp. That's where we are, 23 hours at, or 11 o'clock, uh, 11.30 p.m. And uh, we are getting the. I have actually gotten the day started. That's the thing. That, uh, the day has already more or less started. Uh, what I've been doing is uh, I'm fixing up the kitchen diner. I'm going to be making later on today. I'll be making kimchi and uh, soup base for noodles and ramen noodles and a whole variety of other soup based Asian dishes. And I'm also getting ready to do some uh, Christmas baking as well. So. All that has to be done. I'm doing all the prep work for that uh, as I'm going through all the work I'm doing here. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, on YouTube Stroll, I'm looking at uh, more Christie's uh, webpage. That's her vlog page. Oh, hey. That's her vlog page. And I'm looking at uh, her move into college. So I'm watching a number of videos related to that. And then I'll go on and sort of catch up with her on Vlogmas, and I'll probably check out a couple of pages, pages like, um, I'll probably go back to Lifebury, see if Nerd Zorel has posted another video, maybe check, uh, Morgan Page Love, and see what's going on there, and then, uh, I'll go back to the YouTube subscription list, and then go through that in an order, you know, in any, in, in an ordered basis. Beyond that, uh, what I've been working on now, that's sort of taken a little more time than I expected, is I'm looking at the uh, offerings for IPTV here. What they have out there. And it, it seems to be rather, uh, particularly in Canada anyways. I know in the U.S. there's an enormous amount of uh, content for IPTV. I know in Asia, uh, the Asian offering for IPTV is enormous. But when you come to Canada, places like Canada... Canada is really earning the name backwoods come to country because there's literally nothing here. It is really pitiful the the amount of nothing that is here in terms of uh, the online TV operating, particularly if it's independent. Uh, it, 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 everything's been locked up by two major monopolies, either Rogers or Bell, and there's really nothing that can be offered that's independent. And it's, 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 there, basically, what happens is that. Canada it is like a bunch of four-year-olds. Canadians are a bunch of like Canada and the way the Canadian market operates. A bunch of four-year-olds. You have the Canadian government controlling everything. And these are particularly the socialists in there. Harper's trying to move Canada away from the socialist bent that uh, uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau got Canada into. But you still have that overarching uh, CRTC, the Canadian uh, Restricted Thought Control Council. Uh, they're controlling what Canadians can and can't see on TV and on the radio, ensuring that Canadian content is premier and top-notch, and well, not really, uh, because as long as someone's, get, someone's getting paid, they'll put any old, any old crap out on TV and call it Canadian uh, to give you some content. So, basically... You have the worst shows on TV, or if they do have good shows, then they have Canada has produced some good shows. They won't finish it. They'll do. A, in other words, you either have uh, crappy shows, a Canadian, we'll call Canadian, Canadian crap content, or Canadian crap, or you got something that's been half-assed, where they really haven't put any effort into it, and maybe they'll do half a season, or they'll do half a series, and then leave it for there, or they'll do part of a series. Leave it for a couple of years. Come back, do another bit of the series. You know, it, in other words, there's never any commitment to anything. I give an example of how, how, what Canada is like in terms of its entertainment capacity. Let's take the iconic Canadian show Second City. Everyone's proud of Second City. Oh, it's all Canadian, Canadian with Mike Myers and everybody. Oh, it's all, it's all Canadian. Uh, and the thing is, 
it Canada didn't produce um, Second City. It was NBC. It was an American network. Canada had started to produce it, got lost interest in it the way it did everything else, and uh, <laughs> sold off the rights to an American TV company. The American TV company and NBC came in, came in, started the show up again. It became popular. Then Canada, woo, on the bandwagon again. <laughs> I mean, that's Canada really, really right now is a bunch of bandwagoners. If something does not become popular overseas or in the United States, they don't want anything to do with it. As soon as it becomes popular overseas or in the United States, that's when it's Canadian. Right? Mike Myers, who heard of Mike Myers before Mike Myers became Mike Myers in the United States on Second City? No one heard of him. Soon as he became uh, uh, like Second City and, and, and Austin Powers, got his fame. He was Canadian. And this, this sums up the Canadian entertainment industry. This is what it is. Because it's all government controlled. And the people in the industry, unfortunately, don't understand. Unless they get out of this government control. Unless they get out of this government welfare system. That, that, that hampers and hobbles the whole entertainment industry. They're not going to have anything. And the thing is, who knows what they'll do? I think they're probably going to stay in their in their uh, welfare stupor. This is what, you know, once you're on a welfare system and you're used to it, it's very difficult to get off because you don't know how to be independent. You don't know how to take care of care of yourself. You don't know how to fend for yourself. You don't know how to earn your own money. You don't know how to cook your own food. And you're dependent for everything. And this this is what socialism does. Socialism creates a bunch of very dependent people. People who are like. Like babies requiring uh, pampering and control uh, by a parental government. And the thing is, is that this is something that I do not wish to be a part of. Uh, so I'm working on independent work. I'm seeing how my channel compares to other channels like like Discovery and um, uh, uh, National Geographic and all those other the, all those other uh, science channels that we call so-called science channel. And I call them so-called science channels because. Their science programs, all these science programs, are locked up behind the uh, the copyright law, where you cannot uh, work on them, you cannot edit them, you cannot uh, uh, examine them, you cannot reuse them in documentaries of your own to to, to show where problems are. Uh, so they aren't really science shows; they're entertainment shows, and they're not designed actually to be designed. You need to understand. These shows are entertainment shows primarily, not science shows. They're designed to entertain you with science. But uh, they're not science shows. Anyways, if you want to see science, you stay here. We're going to give you the science right behind the scenes. This is it. Nitty gritty. Unedited. Unaltered. Unabridged. Right here. So, I'm going to get, a start, get the rest of the day started. I've still got more work to do on here. To see uh, oh, what's going on here. In terms of the content for IPTV. And then uh, I have several bits of work to do to finish up on both the research desk and the editing desk to get the next series of shows out. Episodes out. Alright, see you in a bit. Just about uh, 7 5 on, uh, I think it's uh, Wednesday morning. No, oh, Thursday morning, December 5th. Uh, time goes by, we don't, we don't really sort of think about it. And so, once again, my time is off. And this is kind of nearing the end of the day for me. Uh, I'll have to do uh, a little bit more work, and then I'll knock off probably around 8 o'clock in the morning. And I was supposed to do this a couple hours ago, so the way things are working out is that uh, I'm doing this uh, middle part now for this vlog here. And the last segment will be once again uh, tomorrow morning uh, when I get up. Not tomorrow morning, when I get up. Uh, whenever I get up, uh, that's going to be the next segment. Or should I say the last segment. And then we'll do the whole thing all over again. Uh, basically, if you've been watching this, you can kind of get the, the hang of how things go. There's no set schedule on how things are done, actually done. Uh, it just basically depends on when I'm awake and, when, and how much time I actually have to do things. Uh, today, uh, I started at 6. I'm finishing at 8. So that's about... Uh, uh, 6 to 6 is 12 hours, plus another 2. That's a 14-hour day straight through. Um, but I was working on earlier that sort of took some time, the more time than I expected. And that's why we're 
in this sort of late segment the way we are now is I was looking at the uh, IP toy, IPTV choices. IPTV, for those of you who don't know, is the internet th over the, over, I should say TV over the internet. Is if you have a box hooked up to the internet, uh, to your TV, that's primarily IPTV. If you're watching YouTube on your TV, that's IPTV. And I was looking at all the different choices there for people from basically around the world, We're looking at different uh, uh, global choices. Because I'm here in Canada and trying to see what's available there, particularly uh, for science channels. And there's really not much available. If you're outside of the United States, the United States, uh, except for Asia, has the most number of IPTV channels. Asia has an, um, an enormous amount of IPTV channels. There is an enormous amount to choose from, from the Asian IPTV. In other words, in terms of IPTV, uh, the United States is second in the world to Asia. And everybody else is uh, way back in Booning Land uh, with almost no offerings whatsoever. So I, I was looking at that, and then I started looking to see what was out there for uh, for science, you know, for Discovery Channel and, and offerings as such. But I found that as I was watching the, the different uh, science channels that were online, uh, most of the science channels are kind of pitiful. I went to uh, testtube.com, I think it is. It's the Discovery Network's uh, sort of attempt at putting together a science uh, IPTV network. And most of the stuff there that uh, I've saw that, 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 that's, that's sort of uh, along the science lines is, I would say, typical Discovery, typical... Uh, 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 fair that you would see on TV. In other words, excuse me, it's primarily infotainment. The amount of actual information in there is, uh, in terms of uh, being uh, uh, geek TV for a person who is uh, uh, interested in science. I'm not talking about you know science as entertainment. I'm talking about interested in science. If you're a person who's interested in science. You're interested in the research, you're interested in that, that background information that the average person is not necessarily into. In other words, you geek out about these things. Then most of the science choices, the most of the science options out there, are really kind of pitiful. They're kind of they they they're, they're patronizing, in, in in some aspects. Uh, and you can sort of see that that in many cases, uh, they're designed to sort of. Uh, Almost on an elementary school level, they, they, they don't really get much beyond elementary school. There's a lot of fanfare involved where there's, yay, science, I love science, I love science. And that's about it. There's, so, but the thing is, if, if you know science, if you know research, research is supposed to question things. You're supposed to sort of be able to go up there and question what's happening. You're supposed to sort of challenge it. And, but that's not, that's not what's actually going on in these science shows, these science offerings. What it is, is you. this is what you, it, this is a group of people telling you, this is what you need to believe about science. These are the facts on science. And no one can challenge these facts on science. But the thing is, if you're a scientist, you know this as a scientist, that there is no such thing as facts. That's what the whole thing about the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle is. That says, it tells you that you can only know, know things to a certain degree of probability, that there's always a degree of uncertainty involved in any aspect of research. And this is not brought up at all in this offerings of science. So when I went back and looked at my design for Cyborg Alpha TV, I didn't feel so bad because I can see that I'm offering something completely different that nobody else is offering. If you want to see, if you're the geek type of person who wants to see science as it is, raw, uncut, challenging the conventions, challenging standard ideas, then this is what you want to see. This is what you want to sort of get at. Uh, but if you want simply something that's entertaining or, or entertainment or infotainment and think you're being, well, well I'm being educated, I'm watching educational television, well, you're not. This is, and, and the thing is, is that education and it, things that are 
supposed to be for the mind. I'm supposed to be challenging for the mind. They're supposed to challenge your ideas. Challenge your concepts. Challenge the way you see things. And at some point in time, if it provides you with enough information, it changes your perspective on how you see things. Uh, and this is what Cyborg Alpha TV is going to be designed to do. And because it's about learning, because it's that geek experience, most geeks have and still play... Uh, still, I should say, still have recess. They still play with their, with their toys. I mean, that's what the whole thing about con, uh, anime cons and conventions are about. That's what Comic Con is about. Comics, um, the actions, the figurines, what they call the figurines. Yeah, they're just dolls, basically, and uh, they're kids playing with these dolls. And this is a sort of uh, proven with uh, Shelton Cooper on. Um, not actually proven, but demonstrated with with uh, Shelton Cooper on. Um, Big Bang Theater RL, that he still is pretty much a kid uh, when it comes to no matter what his in intellectual scales are in terms of his uh, prowess and his size intellectually, he still pretty much is a kid and he identifies better with kids. So, Cyborg Alpha TV is going in the right direction. I'm still going to be working on more of the, the, you know, the, uh, the un un unabridged research, uncut research, unedited research. Uh, but I'm also going to offer offering some more of the kids stuff, or so more of the that recess aspect of things, and uh, so. But that's, I'm I'm happy with the way things are going. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just about seven o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to be finishing till eight. Anyways, I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, bye bye. Alrighty, everybody, it's now. Uh, 17 hours and uh, 30 minutes into the day of uh, Thursday, December 5th. And we're ending this vlog. Yes, right. We're ending uh, the vlog for the 4th and the 5th, December 4th and 5th. This is the last segment. And you know what? This is sort of our standard thing as we're ending it like this because, uh, once again, uh, even though I'm just getting up, uh, I got up about a half hour ago. Uh, there's still work to be finished from uh, the day before, from the uh, period before. It's th This is kind of the way things go. Things don't finish up immediately. So they have to be uh, done uh, either during the night, and that's what happened last night. I was up all night working on this. Uh, I ended up going to bed. But that was the thing. Up all night. It was, I went to bed at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I put the soup on to work on the soup, and I'll explain that in the next segment. Uh, in the beginning of BTS vlogs, uh, 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 more about the soup. I was working at the kitchen diner. Uh, some of the stuff in the kitchen diner, particularly when you're when you're making soups or, or you're doing long uh, roasts, uh, you can go to bed in between because the, it's just the stuff cooking, and it could take up to anywhere from eight to eight to fourteen hours uh, for the uh, food to cook. Uh, uh, for the preparation in terms of getting it ready. Uh, and there's not much for you to do. It's just sort of there to be simmering. So, uh, that's what happened. And I'm still working in the kitchen diner now, sort of uh, finishing things up with the, with, the, with the soup base. Uh, so, let's get on with uh, the last segment. And the last segment is going to be the YouTube stroll. I ended up going by, uh, well, not going by, I ended up staying at uh, more Christie's for a bit. Uh, I was watching her entrance into college, and then from there I watched her, uh, her uh, sort of uh, her take on the sorority. Uh, but what sort of uh, amuses me is the uh, university system called the Greek system. But under what you have uh, frats and, um, and and sororities, <laughs> and the thing is that. Uh, the sororities is, uh, and even frats uh, are not necessarily properly named uh, because the Greek term for brothers and sisters, and these are all brothers and sisters in this frats and sororities, and you have your frat brothers and your sorority sisters, is other force and other fee. Uh, other force is uh, for the men, and other fee is for the girls, so that's your sisters, right? So sisters is other fee. And your uh, boys are out of the force. And, but for some reason, uh, they've chosen uh, they've chosen uh, the names have chosen. 
And so the system, even though it's called the Greek system, is not actually Greek. Even though the council is known as Pan-Hellenic, it's not necessarily Pan-Hellenic. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you actually go in and look in and study uh, Hellenic history, uh, there's really not much uh, uh, that's actually Greek about the Greek system. Uh, and so I, my, my argument is, is that if you, and this is a, a uh, playful or, or joking argument, that if you really want to be Greek, then you have to go visit a Greek and uh, learn how to become Greek. You don't necessarily have to go to college or join a sorority or join a frat to become Greek. You can become Greek just by uh, <laughs> by association. <laughs> I mean, for myself, I didn't have to, I didn't have to be Greek for four years at, the, at college. I've been Greek my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, the, the funny stuff is, is that uh, when you watch them and you want and, and you look at them compared to my uncles in, in Greece, I was watching um, some of the uh, uh, one of the shows on Duck Dynasty on the IPTV there, and uh, one of the funny things was is that uh, there is a there is a generational gap, and the older Greeks are significantly different than the younger Greeks. The older Greeks are more the Asiatic Greek. They're more they identify more with the older Hellenic Greek, where where, where the Hellens would have come from, where uh, the younger Greeks identify with the the Europeanized Hellenism. In other words, Hellenism, Hellenism as as brought out in the West is not actually Hellenism. It's a form of Europeanism uh, that is said to be Greek. In other words. Uh, Europeans want to have an ancient history, they want to have an ancient roots, they want to have an ancient culture, so they created this uh, myth that they are related to the Hellens. And this, this actually, this myth uh, uh, was really brought forward by Hitler. And so a large chunk of this, this European view of uh, Hellen Hellenistic history is actually a Hitler, is, is, is actually a Nazi point of view. So, <laughs> this is something to be considered here. Nazism is coming back again. A lot of the, the views held by the Nazis are becoming more popular again. And we'll see this, where this takes us. But, uh, I, found an, I found it interesting. I, 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 what happens is that when I go to watch one video, there are often other interesting videos on the side. The suggestions that I find interesting. And I go over there. And so I went from... Uh, more Christie's to several of the channels to other, several of the girls who had done the sorority pledges and, and I sort of watched their view their take on the uh, sorority pledging and then I ended up going to some of the sororities that actually put out their videos in other words you have the you have the view of the pledges of the girls uh, who are pledging who are rushing these sororities and then you have the sororities themselves who are putting up their videos on YouTube uh, uh, describing what the pledges, what the what the Russia should expect, and in other, in other words, you know, YouTube is actually is a good resource to really uh, to research things, to get personal opinions, personal points of view. You don't have to do things in a very uh, uh, stilted laboratory way. You can get really real world dynamic results, real uh, and. Uh, information from YouTube. So YouTube is a, a very valuable research tool. Uh, I find it very useful for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it shows uh, all, uh, not all the sides, uh, enough of the different sides of the sorority question that you can sort of develop some degree of opinion about it. And there's both good and bad. And, uh, uh, right now I'm in two frames about this, but my argument is uh, once again is that in, if you want to be Greek, you don't actually have to join a sorority or a frat. You can be Greek. You just by associate and find somebody who's Greek who knows the Greek history, who knows how to cook, and there's your Greek. There's your Greek right there. I mean, this is the Greek is primarily a food culture, like any Asian culture. Greek culture is the Western tip of Asian culture. It's the Western most part. Asia's over here. That's the East Asia. That's uh, China, Japan. Asia's in the middle, uh, India's in the middle, and the Middle East and Greece is on the western side. Anyways, our time is up. This is the last segment. I'll begin again in a few minutes. Bye-bye.
Welcome to the library. And I am a librarian. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say can you see Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.